Good morning. It's Saturday, March 21st. Uh, one thing I've been realizing as I've been watching my videos and those of my other colleagues is that I guess I have a fairly Spartan aesthetic. So I want you to know that I'm working on that and hopefully trying to warm this up a little bit. Um, people have commented, you can come into my office at church and the walls are pretty bare. Uh, so I tend not to think about all those things like background and such, but I'm going to work on trying to be better at that. Um, it, it is uh, the second day of spring, and this morning we are continuing our <coughs> readings in Lectio Divina in the Gospel of John. Um, earlier in the week I had on my Cincinnati Reds hat Today I'm lamenting the loss of basketball season with the Golden State Warriors, although this was kind of a lost season for us anyway, but looking forward hopefully to maybe seeing some basketball later, in, maybe in the summer. Uh, this morning we're continuing, as I said, our readings in uh, John's Gospel. We have been engaging in the practice of Lexio Divina. Uh, if this is your first time and you haven't, you can check out the first video uh, from last week where I explain the practice in detail. But this is a way to engage our sacred texts and also to uh, just grow in our uh, awareness of God's presence. As we've said so many times, God is always with us. Uh, and the trouble is we are often not aware of that. And so this morning uh, we will read this text from John chapter 14, 8 through 14. And I'll invite you as I do that to either follow along or listen to me as I read. And the first time asking what stands out to you, what words or phrases jump out to you, what elements of the text are particularly meaningful to you. After that we will meditate and reflect, we will pray and respond, and then we will contemplate and remain. And I'll guide you through that process. John chapter 14, verses 8 through 14. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And you still do not know me. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe in me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. In silence, let us think about the words that we have heard. next step in this process, which hopefully you're becoming quite familiar with, is to, is to uh, meditate. 
contemplation is number four, is to meditate on the words that we've read or to reflect on them. We ask again, what has stood out to you? What has settled itself in your mind? How, do, how does this text or the, the words that you've read or that have jumped out at you uh, connect to your life? Uh, maybe past, present circumstances, or as you think about the future, what, what stands out to you, what grips you? I'm going to read the text again, and we're going to meditate and reflect on these words again. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Let us keep silence as we meditate on these words. In our third step, we pray over these words. We come to God and we respond. What are you hearing from God? How are you feeling led to respond? This is a time to speak with God. Perhaps it's a time to make confession, to give thanks certainly time to worship. And here we ask God for the things we need, which is particularly pointed in this text this morning with that last line where Jesus says, if in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. I'm going to read the text again. and Let's think about the prayers that we want to offer to God. Philip said to him, Lord, Show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe in me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. 
I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Let's keep silence as we pray over these words. In our final step, we contemplate these words. It's a way of remaining in God's presence. We're hearing God speak to us. And this is a place where we contemplate that fully. What is God saying to us? How is God inviting us to act, what things ought we to be doing? How can we reflect God's ways and will in the world? And how can we just simply enjoy God's presence? I'm going to read the text one more time as we contemplate these words Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe in me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Let's keep silence as we contemplate these words and remain in the presence of God. Amen. I have generally tried to refrain from commenting on my own observations from the text because this is uh, the important thing is what you're hearing from God. But I've always been struck by this comment that Jesus makes that those who trust in him will do even greater 
things that he has done, even greater works, uh, because he is going to the Father. And uh, for a long time that puzzled me. Uh, but then I started thinking, yes, as the spirit of Jesus is spread amongst his followers all around the world who uh, follow in his ways, uh, the impact of his words and teachings has spread exponentially. And um, this has always been a great challenge uh, and a source of hope uh, that God is at work uh, today and throughout history all over the world. Friends, we're going to take a break. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday. Um, I invite you to participate in the live streaming of worship at Second Presbyterian Church at 11 o'clock. And um, then on Monday, we will return to these texts uh, I will be with you Monday, and then uh, you will get the opportunity to hear some uh, different voices as all the members of the formation team are going to take turns leading these sessions. Uh, it'll be good for you to hear a different voice, and you know, you'll get some different background, uh, something a little bit um, uh, warmer, less Spartan, and I'm going to work on that, as I said at the outset myself. I want to let you know how thankful we are uh, to be together in community, how thankful I am for those of you who are participating in this. Uh, if you're doing this with family, uh, I encourage you to talk about the things that you're hearing. Uh, sometimes we're reticent to do that, um, but this is a time to be open um, in the ways that God is present among us to share that with each other and in so doing to grow in our faith as we continue even in the midst of being apart as a community at Second Presbyterian Church and beyond perhaps to be a welcoming community of faith where Jesus Christ transforms lives. May the peace of God rest on all of you now and forever. Amen.